The Nintendo Switch was announced this morning. This is what the NX has become. Nintendo NX was the code name. The official product is called the Switch. It's a new console. It is a portable console that can be docked for normal TV use. And we're talking about it here today because it's interesting from a few perspectives, one of which is, of course, hardware. Big news point for any console. The Switch has a new Tegra Pascal SoC. We'll get into the details on that in a moment. First of all, this coverage is brought to you by Antec and their new Cube Mini ITX case designed by Razer, which can support a full custom loop liquid cooling solution. The Switch is built in partnership with NVIDIA. It's using a new Pascal Tegra chip, so the Tegra line is a more mobile and portable line of GPUs, or actually SOCs is the more appropriate term. And the Pascal one, we haven't seen a whole lot of yet. It started to appear in cars, but uh, certainly is in the Nintendo Switch. And that's because NVIDIA themselves posted an announcement saying, we're using our architecture that's in the world's best GPUs in the Switch, which means Pascal. So it is a Pascal SoC system on chip. This chip will also be on ARM architecture because that's what Tegra runs on. So it's not an x86 architecture, it is ARM. And unless something major has changed with Pascal and the new Tegra, that will probably remain the case as it was with the Maxwell versions of the Tegra chips. Other interesting news. The Tegra Pascal SoC will have unified memory, which is not something that's possible with the add-on cards with x86 architecture. Uh, so that will be feasible. I don't know if Nintendo has enabled that, but it's certainly uh, a possibility and probably likely that they're using unified memory. That would be a good thing. Now, in the trailer for the Switch, we saw very clearly that the Elder Scrolls Skyrim is in there. I'll talk about the other games in a moment, but Skyrim is the one I want to point out because that is obviously a PC game. It's on other consoles too, but it is a PC game. And the interesting point here, I suppose, is that NVIDIA already has OpenGL and Vulkan running on the Tegra K1 and the Maxwell Tegra. Uh, so in theory, because OpenGL and Vulkan works on both of those, it should be a bit easier to port games from one device to the other, though you're still dealing with new APIs. So the API that's advertised for the Nintendo Switch is called NVN API. NVIDIA already has its own NV API. I'm guessing the extra N probably means Nintendo. So it probably just means NVIDIA Nintendo API. So that's the application programming interface used for the Nintendo Switch, as far as we know right now. Not sure how Skyrim's coded, if it's through NVN or something else. Uh, but just points of interest there from a software level. As far as we're aware right now, the Switch is probably processing and rendering all of its uh, output on the device itself, even when you undock it and take it mobile. And I'm guessing that's the case because this shouldn't be something like a shield where it's just rendering remotely and then wirelessly transmitting to the device. There's a lot of reasons to believe that. One of them is that internet's just not that good worldwide and the Switch was shown in its commercial used on a plane, which absolutely does not have enough up and down internet speed to do any kind of remote rendering and the latency would be insane. So it should all be processed on device. It's basically a tablet that's got two controllers on rails, so they hook into it on rails and then you can pull them off and use them separately as two controllers and they can even be separated into one controller per person. So you could have local multiplayer on it, two players, and each person uses one half, basically, of the controller set if the game has simple enough functions like Mario Kart where that could be done. Alternatively, those two controllers can be docked into a single uh, sort of base station, not to use a, a Vive word, but we'll call it that, and that just creates one fixed controller, more similar to what you're used to for a local console gaming experience in a living room. I'm not sure if that mount, that base station, has any sort of battery pack or anything like that in it. Uh, but you can hook them into that. And then as a third alternative, there is a more traditional rounded controller that's shown in an eSports scene in this trailer, which is worth pointing out because Nintendo has not had a good history of supporting eSports. NVIDIA, AMD, Intel, they all pretty much get it. They support eSports pretty heavily in the PC space. We all know that. Uh, so maybe Nintendo's starting to feel a bit of, of pressure or encouragement to do that this time around. But we'll see if it remains anything uh, outside of the, the trailer that we just saw. So the three types of controllers all have pretty much the same input other than when you're using the detachable ones standalone as two separate single controllers. And that includes two analog thumbsticks, a D-pad, which is kind of faked on one of them, X, Y, A, B button. So you've got four buttons on the top side, a home button, a mystery button. I'm not really sure what that one does. 
and then plus and minus buttons, which are probably for paging or volume or whatever. The controllers also definitely have at least the normal left and right buttons, but I'm not sure if there are bumpers on them yet. And as far as the games that were shown in the trailer this morning, we know for sure that Skyrim HD is in there, the Skyrim Remastered uh, remake that's coming out very soon for all platforms that it's currently on, including the Switch, which will be next year, March 2017, as its release date. So Skyrim will probably be a launch title. And other games on it, we saw Splatoon 2, Mario Kart 9, a new 3D Mario in there. Uh, there's NBA 2K16 or something. 2K16 is a bit old, I guess, at the time it launches, so maybe 2K17, but an NBA game. And then Breath of the Wild, which is the Zelda game that I've previously stated I'm actually pretty interested in. So that's what we know about right now in terms of the games, the software, uh, APIs, the NVN API, the SOC is a Tegra Pascal chip. I don't have a block diagram on it. I don't have specs on it, detailed ones anyway. We've asked NVIDIA for more information. They basically said, uh, we can't tell you, you have to go to, N to Nintendo because this is their product. So uh, waiting on Nintendo to talk to us, not sure that'll happen. And maybe they won't like our use of their trailer in this video because they don't have a great YouTube presence either. But that's everything we know so far. Uh, I am planning to get one of these and minimally tear it down, if not do more, uh, just because it is an interesting device. We'll try and take it apart without destroying it. But at the heart of things, it is a portable handheld console that is kind of entering the space of the 3DS, can be docked into a normal laptop docking station equivalent that connects it to your, uh, your TV, your monitor, whatever, so you can play it normally from a uh, living room environment. So that is everything. As always, Patreon link to post your video for more information to help us out directly, things like that. Subscribe, comments below. I'll see you all next time. Nighty-nighty. Ah, spaghetti.